we're going to talk about linear models and uh, talk a little bit about what they are, uh, why we use them, but more importantly, we're going to talk about uh, the process to help develop these things. Um, so oftentimes these come out of the dreaded word problems. And it's important to know that uh, there's a method to, that we use to try to deal with these things. Okay? First of all, what is a model? Um, a model is just an expression or equation, uh, uh, some sort of mathematical relationship that we use to describe what happens in the real world. Um, the important thing about this is it's an idealization. It's an approximation. It's not exact, but hopefully it's close enough that we can analyze and look at it and get some insight into what's happening, in particular for the physical uh, phenomenon uh, that we're interested in. And the idea is this. We start off with some physical situation. Okay. And we're not quite sure what's going on, or we need to uh, understand some of the deeper things going on about this, or make, try to make predictions. Okay. What we do then is we try to come up with a set of equations or system of, of equations that can be used to describe roughly what's happening here, at least capture the important parts of this. And then once we do that, we can take those equations and there's certain things we can do with them to, in terms of the analysis. Uh, but usually what ends up happening is that these are very complicated and we have to have, do some sort of approximation to try to understand what's going on. And the analysis can be quite difficult. So we've got these three aspects. And now at the very start, normally what happens is that we'll take the physical situation and we'll try to figure out what's going on here and, uh, using some sort of basic principles to, to express the idea or the basic phenomenon that we're interested in. Once we do that, we can do some analysis, uh, do some approximations, figure out what's going on, and hopefully that's going to give us some insight to, and answer some of the questions that we originally wanted. Now, unfortunately, this is not really quite so clean cut and so nice. Oftentimes what happens is we'll look at the mathematical model, we may not like it, go back and uh, think about are we missing something, we may go back and forth here many times. Once we get a model that we like, we'll start to do this, and maybe this isn't so nice. And we end up going back and forth, trying to figure out what's going on here. And when we do that, if we get things we don't understand or don't that seem counterintuitive, we may end up going back to the physical situation. And we can end up taking different paths and, and doing different things in different orders. But there's basically these three things in terms of what we're interested in this class. Okay? So, one of the things that confuses students, though, is we have a written description of, of some physical situation. We're going to talk about the methods that we use, the, the approach that we use to go from here to set up and get this initial estimation uh, of what's going on. Okay? And there's a number of steps. Um, and the key thing to recognize here is it's not magic. Uh, it takes some work, and you rarely get it right the first time. But, what do we do? So the question is, is, how do we develop these models? So, the zero step is just read and figure out what the heck is even being asked. And that can be very difficult, so don't underestimate that. Now, you should not expect to be able to just read the question and immediately understand what's going on and get an answer. Right? You need to play with it and explore and try to understand what's going on. Uh, so the next thing is, is draw a picture. Now, this picture, depending on the context, you can try to draw some schematic of a physical situation. Right? If you're looking at Superman jumping off a building, lands on the ground, you want to find some triangle, you may do this. Or you can just think about what the function itself should look like and work from there. Okay? Uh, don't underestimate your intuition here. Your intuition is going to play a, a 
important role in this. Okay, the next step is you've got to figure out what are the variables. What are the things that are changing? What are the things that are not changing? And uh, they're not going to be named or explicitly identified in the question. It's up to you to understand from your picture, from your schematic, what are the things that are changing, what are the things that are not, and you've got to give them names. Okay? If you can't give them names, you can't go forward and write out an expression. These things will not be given to you. Okay. Once you do that, then you can start figuring out what the relationships are. Uh, the first step of that is just figure out what other relationships. Usually there's going to be more than one, so you're going to have a system of expressions that are used to describe what's going on. And these things should be consistent with the variables you've defined and the picture uh, that you're trying to get. Okay. Now you should not forget that there was a question asked in this, in this step here. And again, you should not expect to be able to just answer the question. It's difficult, it takes some time, and you should explicitly ask what you need to do uh, to solve the problem. So you have to come up with a plan to do so. Once you do that, then you can execute the plan. Okay? And the final step, at least for us, is check your work. Right. Did you make a mistake somewhere, like I just did there? And if you did, you go back and fix it. Close enough. And uh, if not, um, uh, you should then ask, does the solution make sense? Right? Does this uh, answer you get intuitively uh, make sense in terms of uh, what you expected? If not, you should ask why. And it may be a problem with the uh, model itself, or maybe a problem with your not quite understanding what's going on, or it just may be it's a counterintuitive situation. Okay. All of those things are possible. Okay. Let's look at an example. Okay. So the example is, Cost of a phone plan is $100 for the first, first thousand minutes and 10 cents for each minute thereafter. And the question is, is what's the cost of the plan for any given time? Okay. So let's see. So we're trying to figure out what is the cost of the plan. So there's the question, the thing that we're supposed to find. Uh, what information we have here? We have the cost for the phone plan is $100, first 1,000 minutes. And then we have 10 cents for each minute thereafter. Okay. So step zero is just go through, read this, parse it, try to figure out what's the important things. So we've got the cost of the first 1,000 minutes, the cost for each minute after that, and the question itself is what's the cost of the plan for any given time. Okay. The next step is to graph this thing. So let's see, so what do I think is going to happen? We have the cost is going to be a function of the time. Uh, for the first 100 minutes, Sorry, first 1,000 minutes, 
the cost is going to be a thousand. It's going to look something like that. Now, after that, each minute is going to give me a steady increase of ten cents. So, this is going to be changed. Uh, this is not going to change uh, no matter what the number of minutes are. So, that's going to give me a straight line. And the question is, what's the slope of that line going to be? Let's see, what is this point? This is the point 1,100. Okay. So now based on this, let's see what we're going to have. First of all, the next step then is to figure out what are our variables. I'm going to define t to be the time, number of minutes that we've used the phone. And I'm going to define c to be the cost of using the phone. So those are the only two variables I have here. Let me be careful here. This is minutes. And in my units for this, the cost, I'm going to keep those in dollars. All right, so let's see. So what are the relationships here? So the step three is to figure out the relationships. So the first relationship is this. If the time is less than a thousand minutes, the cost is going to be a hundred dollars. Uh, if the time is more than a thousand minutes, I need to what? I need to add ten cents. each additional minute. Okay. So those are basically the two relationships i got to sort out. Okay. So now for my plan. And I'm going to try to focus on this place where that we saw that linear relationship. So i got to first figure out how much time after a thousand minutes are used? I'm going to figure out the cost of those minutes. And then from that, I have to add the hundred dollars. Okay, so that's my plan. Okay. And now I just got to carry that through. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to assume that if the time is greater than a thousand, that's the real question here. extra time that I've used is going to be that time minus a thousand. Okay. So the idea here is if t equals a thousand and one, I've used one extra minute. So I'm going to have a thousand and one minus a thousand, which is equal to one minute. If t is two thousand, I've had uh, two thousand minus one thousand extra minutes or an extra thousand minutes. Now, the cost for each of those minutes is 10 cents. Let me be careful here. This is going to be t minus 1,000 minutes. Let me be careful about my minutes here. This is going to be 10 cents per minute. 
Now the problem is I need this to be in dollars. So let's see. So this is going to be, uh, I want this to be one dollar. And there's going to be a hundred cents per dollar. So these cents cancel. And this is going to give me 10 over 100 or 0.1 dollars per minute. So the cost then is going to be the dollars per minute times the number of minutes. It's going to be 0.1 times t minus 1,000. So now let's put this all together. The cost then is going to be $100 if the time is less than a thousand minutes. time is greater than a thousand minutes or equal, the cost will be $100 plus 0.1 times t minus 1,000. And that's going to be dollars. Okay. And for the last step is check my work. Well, let's see. So this is basically saying uh, as long as I've got less than a thousand minutes, it's going to be the one that so that's consistent with my horizontal line that I had. <clears throat> After a thousand minutes, then I'm going to have this thing as a linear equation, and then for each minute over a thousand, it's going to increase by 0.1, or one dime. So it seems to make sense. Uh, in terms of the uh, steps that I took, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go back and watch the video and make sure everything I did was okay. Thank you.